could draw before I could talk. Um, I always had that ability to be a creative person. Mike Wills was born to paint. His talent was evident even at an early age, but so too were his insecurities. You weren't uh, a sociable kid. You were kind of isolated with this uh, gift and you didn't know how to talk to people, but you knew how to create something to show them. I was definitely an angry kid because I didn't know how to express who I was and I couldn't find out, uh, you know, just to be normal. And so I had a tough time dealing with that. So a lot of anger was built up inside me and I had to release it somehow. I used to punch on my concrete walls until my hands would bleed and, and break. As he grew older, Mike found an outlet in sports and specifically on the ice where he excelled. Hockey was always my first passion and you know, art was always on the back burner. So I had this mentality of I need to keep pushing, I need to be this better player and, and to make the next rung. So I was never enjoying myself through the process of hockey and I was always angry to the point where I was so determined that it became a negative aspect in my life. Mike moved up the ranks and worked towards his dreams of one day playing in the NHL. But even after earning a hockey scholarship, his insecurities and the weight of expectations began to affect his performance. There is a bunch of coaches that would tell you, like, just by their actions of not playing you, you're worthless. It was just like heartbreaking because you wanted to please these people. And by pleasing them, it was performance. And when I was very angry, I would play a certain way. And my parents and a couple people that have watched me throughout my career knew. Already consumed by uncontrollable anger, a series of tragic events put Mike on the brink. I lost my roommate. Uh, he got a, hit by a car. And then I lost a friend with ALS. And then I lost a buddy that I always trained with. He electrocuted himself. And then a couple weeks later, um, uh, Walter, one of my best friends, he was cliff, ju cliff jumping back in Canada. Um, and the wind blew him back on the rocks. So I buried Walter that Friday, and then uh, I had another friend that Sunday commit suicide. So I buried two guys in two weeks. And then I had to go play <laughs> a week later to go hockey. Questions about death and dying dominated Mike's already troubled mind. Trying to escape the pain, he turned to alcohol. And as his reckless off-ice behavior increased, his performance suffered. I didn't know if there was an afterlife, and I didn't know, um, you know, if, if there was a God or not. There was always something in my mind that I knew he was there, but I was always angry at him. And I kept yelling at the sky when stuff wasn't going right or going my way. And it wasn't until um, college on my hockey scholarship that I met Christ. And uh, a captain showed me when I was at my darkest point in my life of drinking and partying and women and, and not playing as a hockey. Uh, player and you found your identity in that and he said no like your identity's in who you are and in Christ and he was there to help me to show me Jesus and God and what it has to offer. Through mentoring and encouragement of his team captain Mike began to pursue a relationship with God. The anger and confusion was being replaced by a peace that he could not understand and it was at this time that his dreams of playing in the NHL gave way to his God-given talent. I couldn't play, so I had to paint again. And I had to go through the, the grieving pains of the loss, so I painted. And that was the light bulb that hit me, is my captain said to me, is like, he's made everything that you love, whether it's music, hockey, art, uh, you know, fashion, math, buildings, whatever it is. So you actually look at a tree and go, you know, God's made that, you know. So that really changed my focus on life perspective and he's given me the gift to uh, create and I, I didn't know that at the time. Mike left hockey on his own terms and began to pour his life into his art. The change in his heart clearly expressed on canvas. It was like venom. 
It would just, it would actually pour out of me and, and it was just black. All the canvases were dark. And as he's trying to chip away at me, you know, I'm getting lighter, lighter and lighter. So over the 10 years of painting, it's been a process from going from abstract, dark, to more fine-tuned in the and in, in showing my true, you know, heart on a canvas. What inspires me is is the colors that he's given us in this world. Um, you get to see it every day in a sunset. He makes a new sunset every day and a new a new sunrise. Like you know, he's. It's pretty amazing to bask in his greatness sometimes, even when you don't agree with him because he's made everything that you love. Today, Mike is using his God-given talent as a professional artist living in Toronto. He paints with a freedom and joy that he never knew, but is now grateful to have. I realize he can take something like a wretch like me, <laughs> literally take me out of the hole like the pit and bring me out and save me and forever grateful for that.